Okay, so first, let's give you some information about Royal Holloway. So if you don't know much about us, um, Contrary to our name, which is Royal Holloway University of London, we're not actually based in London. We're in Egham, which is um, which is 40 minutes by train to central London, so not very far at all. But we are a little bit more in the Surrey countryside. We're very near to Windsor, Englefield Green, Twickenham, Virginia Water. Um, and as I said, very, very close to central London by train as well. As you can see there in the left hand corner, we are a top 22nd university in the UK and 88% of our students say that they were satisfied with their university experience. Now on the left there, you'll see a map um, of our campus uni. And if you're not too sure what that means, um, a campus university is something where all of the buildings are in one place, kind of like a, a mini village. Um, so it's where you would live in your first year, where you'd meet your friends, do sports, go shopping, go to the doctors, um, and obviously attend your lectures and seminars. Whereas a city university, somewhere like uh, Manchester or lots of the ones in London, um, you would have to commute between your lectures um, and your kind of accommodation as well. So very, very spread out and it's completely up to the individual what you might prefer. So we're going back to that map of Royal Holloway. Um, you can see there all the different colours. If you're not too sure what they are, if you're not familiar with our uni, um, the purple ones are accommodation, which is where you would stay in your first year, maybe even years after that. The blue buildings are academic buildings, so that's where you'd have lectures or seminars. Um, and the red buildings are social areas where you might meet your friends for a little catch up, go for some dinner, whatever you would do. You can also see there that we're really lucky to have loads of beautiful green areas on our campus. And we're really um, fortunate to have such a beauty, kind of a, a range of beauty spots all around the campus. And if you've ever been to our, um, to our university, you'll know how, how beautiful it is. OK, so if you do go to university, um, you'll be thinking about the range of different courses that you can apply for. Now, at Royal Holloway, there's more than 250 courses that you can study for your degree. And on the left here, you'll see a list of our departments. Now, there's only 20 there, um, but within those 20 departments, there are dozens and dozens of options to be able to specialise into a certain area. So, for example, you can see history, um, but obviously you can specialise into uh, medieval history or ancient history, or you can just do general history and then choose your modules um, as you go through your course. You can also do something called a combined honours, and that's something that I did for my undergraduate degree. And that's where you um, do two subjects together that normally complement each other. So I did um, English and Spanish, for example, because I just couldn't decide between them at A-level. I loved them both. And actually, um, it was really, really helpful for my career choices um, going forward to have that combined honours degree. Um, so for this kind of support, before you even do your UCAS, which I'm sure some of you in you know, year 12, year 13 have already started thinking about, um, make sure you do lots and lots of research, research on the universities that you're interested in to see what they offer. Um, so, you know, obviously see who does your course, but do check the specifics as well. Um, for example, what we might offer as an English course could be completely different to what another university might offer. Um, and I found that when I was looking at unis that one English course was really, really traditional um, and focused very heavily kind of on the historical side of it, um, whereas another one was, you know, very media, media heavy. Um, so really do check, you know, the specifics of each university course that you're interested in applying to, because you don't want to get all the way there and it turns out that it's actually not what you signed up for. Um, again, if you need support before you even start this whole uni process, um, lots of universities use a system called Unibuddy. Um, and, you know, this is a, an example on the right there that you can see from Royal Holloway. Um, so that's a service, Unibuddy, where you can chat with current undergraduates and students. Um, and it's really, really, really helpful if you want to ask them any questions. So that could be about anything. It could be about the course, the campus, accommodation, whatever. Um, you can see kind of who they are, where they're from, what they're studying, etc., and ask them any questions that you want. Um, and there's also staff on there as well. So really, really helpful um, service if you've got any questions. You can also see um, the Royal Holloway app there, a little screen grab on the left. Um, you can download that and I'm sure lots of other universities have got the same thing. And this is um, really beneficial when you're actually a student at the university um, because you'll get your timetable on there, messages and you know messages coming through, etc. But even by not logging in, just as a as a general user, it's still really really helpful to see information, maps, etc. 
Okay, so for some of you, um, uni is a really exciting thing, you can't wait to go, but for some of you, it also could be quite a daunting experience, maybe something that's, you know, maybe you've got a couple of worries, and that's all completely normal. You might even experience both, I know I certainly did. So this is why this PowerPoint about how you can be supported at university is, is really important, because we want you, you know, if you decide it's the right decision for you, we want you to know that there's the support there behind you, you're not going into this alone. So there are lots of benefits of going to university. What are they? Making new friends, and that's obviously from all over the country, um, different places in the world. You might make long lasting friendships with people that you would never normally meet. Learn new skills, again, that's from your degree, or it could be people that you meet that give you new experiences, um, or even the societies that you join. You can become an expert, and obviously that's, you know, as you're specialising further and further into your degree or further study, or that could be from, again, a society that you join. Um, I, for example, did um, the radio society at my university, which is something I never did before, and I learned so much from that. I don't necessarily know if I'm an expert, but I, I certainly learn a lot more than, you know, than I knew before. Studying abroad, um, that's something that obviously you can do with lots of different degrees. Um, so you can travel the world, um, you know, to, to study or work, oh, just have those experiences. Um, and then again, that's something I did as part of my Spanish degree, and it was one of the best experiences that I ever, ever kind of did in my life. Work experience. Um, so lots of degrees in universities offer placement years um, or work experience as part of their degrees. We're also at Royal Holloway really, really big on volunteering locally. Um, and that's, for example, raising money in the local community, working with schools, whatever it might be, just really getting new experiences and adding things onto your CV. Living away from home might be a massive benefit for going to university for lots of you. Um, and it's completely up to you what you want to do. You know, do you want to go and live in halls as far away as possible from your parents? Or actually, do you want to commute and stay at home and just, you know, hop in the car or on the train to get to university? Maybe you want to live an hour away so that you can have your independence, but actually be able to pop home really, really easily. It's completely up to you. And there are options available and support available to help with whatever decision you want to make. As I said, clubs and societies are a massive benefit of going to university. Um, at Royal Holloway, we've got over 110 clubs and sports groups. Um, you can also join clubs that are relevant to your degree. So you meet people with really similar interests to you. And universities always put on like free events so you can go and just try out new things um, and just see if you're interested, really. And the last benefit I'd say of going to university is um, the job prospects that you will gain from this. So it's really important to note that some jobs do require a specific degree. For example, if you want to be a dentist, you need to have a degree in dentistry. But it's also worth noting that lots of employers ask for a degree just to apply to that job. And it doesn't necessarily matter what that's in. Um, so, for example, my sister's done a history degree. You know, lots of people say to her, oh, is she going to be a history teacher? No, it's actually just the transferable skills that you're going to get from that degree to show that you can work in that kind of way. Um, so it's definitely opened up a lot of job prospects for her. And she's actually now got a job with the government. So she's done really, really well from having that history degree. OK, so let's have a look um, at what's available at university. What support is there for you? So I'm now going to talk you through these three areas and give you specific examples of what we do at Royal Holloway University as well. Um, I'm going to talk through these three different types of support as a kind of timeline from the minute that you start thinking about university um, all the way through to you finishing your degree and actually looking for a job as well. But first, let's do a little quiz just to see how much you can guess about bursaries. So this um, a bursary is automatically or something that might automatically be given to you should you meet certain requirements. So the quiz question is, in the academic year 2018 to 19, some Royal Holloway students were given their portion of £2.5 million in bursaries. But approximately how many students received a bursary? Now, I'd like you to use the chat function, please, and have your guess. Is it A, 500 students, B, 1,000 or C, 2,000? OK, getting a real mix here. This is really good. Really, really good to see. Interesting. Okay, so we're mainly split between B and C. I don't think I've seen any A's coming through. So if you chose option C, you are correct. Well done. 
the amount that you can receive um, for a bursary is different depending on the university that you're interested in um, and what the bursary is for. So again, make sure you do your research on that. Um, so for example, at Royal Holloway, the bursaries can range from anything from £500 all the way up to £5,000. And that's money that you receive and you don't have to pay back. So definitely do your research on bursaries and scholarships um, for the universities that you're interested in. Don't worry um, if you've got more questions about this, we are going to be coming back to um, bursaries and scholarships very, very shortly. OK, so before you go to university, um, as I said, you should do the obvious things like doing lots and lots of research on the place, the courses, etc. But it's also worth checking whether there's any support, uh, support available to you before you go. For example, some universities provide unconditional offers, which you might have heard of, and that means that you're going to have a place at that university regardless of the grades that you get. Um, so that's really common for students that have taken like a gap year and already know their grades, but some universities do just give conditional offers out anyway. Sorry, unconditional offers. Um, here at Royal Holloway, an example of the way that we support young people is what we call the contextual offer. You can see the picture of that there on the left. Um, and this means that we'll give you an offer on UCAS of up to two grades lower than stated online or in the prospectus. So, for example, if the course requirements um, online said ABB, you would receive a contextual offer for ACC, which would just give you that peace of mind should anything happen whilst you're doing your A-level exams. Um, now, this is only eligible if you meet certain criteria, um, and that's going to be automatically sent to us from your UCAS form. Um, the criteria that I'm talking about here is things like the school that you attend or things in your personal background. Um, and just to let you know that it doesn't take into account the GCSEs that you've got or a subject specific grade. So, for example, um, for electronic engineering at Royal Holloway, the entry requirements are ABB, um, but it has to, you have to get an A in maths. Um, and unfortunately, that maths grade, because it's subject specific, that couldn't be altered. So it would be the two Bs that would that we would be flexible on. If you do want more information about this, um, best thing to do is go onto Google or any other search engine and just type in Royal Holloway contextual offers. And there's loads of information on there. And there's going to be a really good YouTube video going on there, um, like a 60 second information thing very shortly. There's also lots of other types of financial um, help available to students across different universities. So again, um, the ones on the right here are some that are available at Royal Holloway, but every university is going to have their own. Um, we want to make sure that anyone who wants to come to university can, and you shouldn't let your, your home situation dictate whether or not you can follow those dreams. Um, and hopefully these academic allowances do help. So to conclude that point, make sure you check the websites of any universities that, uh, that you're interested in. Check for allowances, grants, bursaries and scholarships to help you along the way. OK, so um, let's have a look in a bit more detail at these bursaries and scholarships. Um, as a general rule of thumb, if you're not too familiar, um, bursaries are usually given to you automatically, um, whereas scholarships are more competitive and you have to normally write like an application form um, for them. As you can see here, um, scholarships are more about recognising academic success in an area um, and uh, kind of academic ability, whereas bursaries are more um, related to the income situation um, or your kind of your family income situation as well. So um, make sure you check out um, Student Finance England as well um, to make sure that you know what you're going to be entitled to loans wise. So you can obviously gain um, a tuition loan, which will cover your course costs, and you can also gain a maintenance loan, which goes um, goes towards your living costs. As you can see from the colourful table there on the right, um, the amount that you will receive as a as a maintenance loan depends on your household situation, and it depends on where the university is that you attend. Um, for example, this table here on the right is for Royal Holloway um, and students who go to Royal Holloway get the maximum amount of loans because we're so close to London. Um, so this wouldn't you wouldn't get as much money for other universities. Um, so really do do your research about, you know, where that university is and how much you would be receiving. As I said before, money should never be a reason um, why people don't go to university because there's so many ways of supporting you. I know it's a lot of money and it seems like a lot, you know, up front, but there are lots and lots of ways to support you. So it should never be a reason to not follow those dreams that you've got. 
Okay, so from that point, imagine that you've now got your spot at your favourite uni and it's suddenly time to start. And um, so moving weekend is massively exciting, but again, can be quite a daunting experience for some people. Um, for lots of students, it's their first time living away from home or meeting so many new people. So universities want to make sure that there's lots of ways um, to help you settle in. So from the day that you move in, there's going to be student ambassadors to help you carry in your suitcases and make sure you know where you're going and what you're doing. At Royal Holloway, we run a scheme called Peer Guides, um, and that's someone from your department, but in an older year, who's there to support you every step of the way with any questions that you've got or problems that you're having. Um, now, you're assigned that peer guide as soon as you make Royal Holloway your firm choice on UCAS. So you can ask them any questions right from the, you know, right from the outset. Um, you can also take advantage of companies like Unikit, which you can see in the left hand corner there. Um, now, they provide you with all the essentials like sauce pins and oh, I don't know what other student essentials are there. It's been such a long time now, I can't remember. Um, but they literally deliver it to your doorstop. So that's a, a you know, takes away a, kind of a stress for a lot of people. And there's lots of other activities that I recommend doing as well when you start uni. Um, for example, signing up to the local doctor's surgery. Um, a lot of campus universities will have one on, on, you know, on site, basically. Um, but you can also sign up to local ones in the area. And that just means, I know it's not necessarily the most enjoyable thing to do, but it just means that if you were to get ill, you've got that safety blanket there, you know, should you need anything. OK, um, likewise, going to uni is an, a really awesome experience. We hear all the good stories, but we all know that you not every day is going to be the best day of your life. So where can you go if you have a problem? Um, looking after your mental health is obviously extremely important and your well-being, too. Um, and you can turn to your student union for the university who will run advice centres for you. And they can offer you help on well-being, housing issues, finance problems and lots more problems. And hopefully, obviously, obviously, you never experience any of these problems, but it's good to know that they're there if you do have any issues. And um, they offer advice and they are trained advisors who will help you every step of the way. I know that lots of universities are also kind of give out like, well, we've got like drop in sessions here that were on Zoom, which every single day. And they've got in person kind of drop in centres where you can pick up freebies and advice and lots of things like that. Um, if things do get a bit more tricky, there's also a student counselling service at Royal Holloway um, and you can book an appointment to speak to someone um, who's you know, a professional in that area to get some help. Um, and I always think that a problem shared is a problem halved and it's definitely better to have someone who knows what they're doing help you rather than you trying to battle through something by yourself. Equally, you're going to be assigned a personal tutor at university who you're going to have regular check ins with um, and they're normally someone from your department. Um, who will be there to help you with anything along the way and they'll get to know you really really well over the three or four years of your degree. Um, they also do things like kind of keep an eye on your attendance, um, they'll write references for you and just generally see how you are. Um, if, you're, if you've got like a form tutor at school or at college um, that's the same kind of vibe of them but you won't see them every morning like you do at school but they'll be there you know whenever you need them. Um, if you have any additional educational needs, make sure that you, again, do some research um, to see what your university can offer you. For example, at Royal Holloway, we've got a designated welfare support team um, and they've got like an open door policy where you can come in and discuss your individual support needs if you need anything. And finally, just on this point, um, you can always turn to your university student services um, or again, your student union for help. And they're going to be there to provide you with help. Um, you know, support with accommodation, issues with your courses, visas if you're going abroad or you're not um, from the UK or any anything that you need. There's always going to be someone to help you out. OK, it's time for another quiz question. So if you were to live away from home, I would like you now to take a guess which category of spending relates to which percentage. So how much would the average student spend their money on food, books, their social life, accommodation and transport. OK, and they relate to those percentages there. So if you're feeling brave, have a little guess in the chat. Um, which one is the 60 percent? Which two are the 16? Which is five and which is three? Have a guess. Oh, OK, we're getting some conflict here. This is really good to see. 
Okay, fantastic. Lots and lots of you are saying, uh, okay, this is good. I think most of you are saying 60% on accommodation. Oh, we've just had a 60% on social life. That person clearly knows how to live their best life. <laughs> Maybe that's the um, what they want to be spending it on, not what you have to spend it on. Okay, this is really, really good to see. Okay, let's have a little look. Let's see what the true answers are. Um, just before I do show you the answers, just to remind you, this is a typical student at Royal Holloway, and this is going to be very, very different depending on, you know, which university you go to, if you're living at home, um, just your personality as well. You might think, oh, I'd never spend that much money on that you know, element. So this is just an example. Okay, so. Those of you who said 60% on accommodation, you are correct. Um, so 38 weeks in a hall of residence on Royal Holloway um, will cost you an average of between £4,500 to £6,900 per year. And the type of accommodation that you go for will depend on how much money you're going to spend on that. 16% is normally um, social life. So you'll probably spend £50 a week on average doing uh, well kind of depending on what you like doing um i love the person who said 60 percent on social life i think that's the way that i would like to live my life <laughs> um and as i said that does depend on you know what it is that interests you but this is just kind of a rough estimate the next 16 percent is um on food so you should expect to spend between 40 to 60 pounds a week on basics again you know are you going to be eating lobster or are you going to be eating baked beans on toast are you going to be somewhere in the middle? It's up to you. 5% you can expect to spend on transport. And um, so if you live locally to campus with the occasional trip to London, for example, that might cost you about £20 a week or £600 a year. Um, but it's going to be obviously more if you live further away, or it could even be free if you walk everywhere. Like I did that at uni, I barely spent anything on transport. Um, I just learned to walk or cycle everywhere. Which means that 3% of your um, weekly costs will go on, or I should say monthly, monthly costs will go on books for your course. Um, and you can expect to spend anything between 300 to £450 a year, depending on your field and type of study. Um, I think this is a really good tip here that you should try buying secondhand. Um, I know Facebook's really good for that kind of thing that you can buy. Um, books from from older students and then obviously sell them on when you're finished with them. And as well, use the libraries to save cash. OK, lovely. So when you're studying, what can you do to help get help with your studies? Um, as a university student, you're going to get to know your university library really, really well. And that's going to be the books in person, but also using an online library, which lots of you might have not done before. Um, our library at Royal Holloway has got more than 450,000 books and 36,000 journals. Um, and there's a dedicated team there who are there 24 seven to help you out with anything that you need. In addition, lots of universities like Royal Holloway offer um, CDES, which is the Centre for the Development of Academic Skills. And they're there to help you with um, anything that you need related to your course. So group sessions or one to one tutorials, drop ins or resources uh, or kind of sessions related to a specific skill for your degree. So, for example, um, if you were a little bit unsure about how to write um, specifically for a university essay, that's somewhere that you could go and get some help. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you will be assigned a personal tutor who you're going to have regular check ins with. Um, and as I said, they're very, very similar to kind of a, a tutor at sixth form or at school. Um, another element that can help you whilst you're studying is course reps. And these are people um, who are elected by students on that particular course to represent your views and ultimately to help improve the quality of the education provided by that university. Um, so, for example, if you think that something on your course should be changed or something's not fair or I don't know, you've got a recommendation, you would go to that course rep and they will then take that to the university to try and make a change for you. Also, don't forget the, you know, the essentials here that you're going to meet loads of new people when you go to university. Um, you know, people on your course are potentially going to have similar interests to you. And, you know, they're going to be there to support you with anything that you need and do like working groups. And as I said earlier, a problem shared is a problem halved. So if you've got anything, go to those people that you meet because you're probably not the only one. I think a lot of people are in the same boat when you start out at uni and it can feel quite daunting. 
Okay, um, so just before we take a look at support in your career when you're at uni, I thought we would take a little look at some celebrities, uh, so another quiz question, and work out what degree they did before they got famous. So you've got four people there. Um, see if you can just take a minute to match the celebrity with the degree. Um, so you can just type in one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, like one A, two B, whatever you want to do, if you would like to save some time. So let's take a minute now and have some guesses. Okay, this is good. Lots of people are going on the Prince William hype. Oh, that person's came up so quickly, I didn't get time to read it. Okay, interesting. Lots of different opinions. I think someone who just posted a minute ago, from very quickly looking, someone got the right answer bang on in their first guess, which is awesome. Brilliant looking good okay let's go through our answers so uh, Courtney Kardashian studied drama and Spanish um, who knows how much she uses that degree now but that's what she studied neuroscience was studied by Emily Sande again quite an unlikely guest there um, but the famous singer Emily Sande actually studied neuroscience at the University of Glasgow music and sport was studied by Jonah Hill and finally Prince William studied geography. So well done if you got those four right. Uh, you might have learned something new today. If that's the one thing you take away from my webinar, that's fine by me. Um, now this is obviously a good, a good kind of bit of fun as well, but it's got a little bit of a deeper meaning that you don't need to worry long term about university. Um, and I know that universities are a really big commitment and you don't want to you know, spend all that money for something that you're not sure about. So you want to make sure that it's something you love, but don't panic and feel like it's going to restrict your life decisions. Because I think that's actually the, the, the benefit of university is that it's going to open up so many doors to you. Very similar to what I was talking about my sister earlier, that, you know, having a history degree did not restrict her to a job in history. She's now doing a kind of a government job. And these celebrities are perfect proof of that, that they're not necessarily using their degree but maybe it opened up even more doors for them. You know, Prince William, for example, potentially didn't need a degree. He's, you know, royalty. Do you need a degree when you're royalty? I don't know. But he's actually used that degree and he's, he's even been in the news in the last few weeks for his um, contributions to like studying kind of climate change and the environment. And his degree definitely has, has given him some inspiration and some insight into that. I think, you know, Emily Sander, who knows how much she's using her neuroscience on a day to day basis. But if it's something you're passionate about and something you love and you're interested in, that's a really good reason to do it. And it just so happens she's an amazing singer as well. But who knows? Maybe if she couldn't sing, that would have been the path she would have gone down. So uh, just to conclude, a degree is all about being transferable and it's showing off that you've got those flexible and transferable skills to employers that actually you can work and think in a specific way um, because you know you have a degree and that's your proof of that if it's in an area that you love and it relates to the job that you want to go into fantastic but it's not always going to restrict you okay you might even do the opposite and open those doors okay just a couple more slides today and um, so studying is obviously a key part of your degree but it's also good to get some work experience too and we're going to now spend a bit of time looking ahead at the support that you'll get looking forward into your career and your jobs um, so work experience is really really good for your cv and will always help you to get a job in the future um, and i think more than anything work experience is is really good for telling you quite clearly if that is an area that you want to work into or not um i mean when i was younger i did like work experience for a newspaper and i i thought wow this is going to be so exciting and actually when i did a week of work experience i thought this isn't for me it's just not the kind of job that i want to be doing and you know i'm so grateful that i did that week of work experience because it taught me a lot about what's important to me so aside from work experience what can you do um you can do things like be a student ambassador for your university um, and that's where you work for your uni um, at Royal Holloway, we pay £12 an hour, which is a really nice little salary. Um, and that could be helping out 
you know, with a range of activities, anything from helping on an open day, or we've just done something where we're making a recruitment video and we've got student ambassadors to help us film that. Um, a benefit of working for your university is that they understand that you're a student and they're not going to put too much pressure on you because they know that you're, you know, you're studying of lectures and seminars and exams that has to take priority. So at least you've got the flexibility there of um, working for your university. You could always get a part time job in a shop or a cafe, for example. Um, and some degrees also offer a year in industry, as I said earlier, where you work for a company and learn those vital skills alongside that. Um, lots of students also do get jobs with those companies after their degrees, so really good to know that if you do get offered an opportunity to do that, take up any opportunity that you can, because it might help you in the long run. Um, finally, some degrees have got a placement year um, or a year abroad as part of their degree makeup, um, and that's where, as I said earlier, you can study, work or volunteer. Um, and as you can see, there's some little pictures there from my year abroad, which I just love to show off because it was just honestly such an amazing experience. You know, I, I grew up in a little village in the middle of nowhere and I never thought I would go and live in another country um, and work abroad and use my languages. And it was such an amazing experience and really, really helped me um, get to where I am now, career wise, personality wise, etc. OK, last slide now. Um, so just to say that, as I said, the more experience that you can get before you leave university, the better. And I know lots of you haven't even left school yet, but it's always good to think ahead. Um, so you can get involved with volunteering. And as I said, we do lots of stuff with kind of local schools or helping out the community. And um, we offer sports volunteering, social action community projects, volunteering abroad, just to name a few. And this is all amazing stuff for your CV and obviously a really good way to meet new people and just have really good life experiences. Um, at most universities, there's going to be a career service to help you find the best route for you after university if you'd like to use it. Um, you can see on the picture there on the right, that's one of our careers advisors. Um, and they give advice, guidance and ideas about how to get the best out of your degree and what you want to do for your kind of job aspirations. And they can even do things like put you in contact with employers or help you write your CV and things like that. Um, universities will also give you the opportunity to network with potential employers. Um, there's things like careers fairs where you'll go around and meet different people from different companies. And companies also use universities because they know how employable graduates are. So they'll go into a university and say, right, we needed someone for XYZ, do you have anyone suitable? And they can come to you. And lots of students manage to get um, degree, uh, sorry, what am I trying to say? Try to, lots of students get jobs after their degrees from exactly that experience. 